Hi everyone, welcome to our part 3 NMC CBT mock test video for those preparing for CBT. In this video, we have included 25 multiple choice questions with answers. Besides, each answer comes with an answer reference, and that will help you to answer any other questions related to the same topic. Question 1. You are attending the personal care needs of a patient with suspected infection risk, and which is the right bag to place the infected linen? Option A, orange waste bag, before being placed in the appropriate linen bag, no more than three-fourths full. Option B, white linen bag, after sorting, no more than three-fourths full. Option C, red linen bag. Option D, water-soluble alginate polythene bag, before being placed in the appropriate linen bag, no more than three-fourths full. Answer is option D. Water-soluble alginate polythene bag, before being placed in the appropriate linen bag, no more than three-fourths full. Infected linen must be placed in red water-soluble alginate polythene bags before being placed in the appropriate linen bag, prior to sending for wash, and ensure that you don't fill the bag no more than three-fourths full. Question 2. As a registered nurse, what should be your right response when you suspect or witness risk to the safety of patients who are under your care or an immediate risk of harm? Option A, report your concerns immediately, in writing to the appropriate person escalating concerns NMC. Option B, ask for advice from your professional body if unsure on what actions to take and protect client confidentiality. Option C, refer to your employer's whistleblowing policy and keep an accurate record of your concerns and action taken. Option D, all of the above. Option D is the correct answer. As a nurse you should report your concerns immediately, in writing to the appropriate person, or escalate concerns to NMC. Ask for advice from your professional body if unsure on what actions to be taken, and protect clients' confidentiality. And refer to your employer's whistleblowing policy, and keep an accurate record of your concerns and action taken. If you witness or suspect a risk of harm to a person in your care, you should report your concerns to the appropriate person or authority immediately. You must act straight away to protect their safety. Question 3. In your view an acceptable record keeping for a medical device must produce the following evidence? Option A. A unique identifier for the device, where appropriate and proper installation, and where it was deployed. Option B. A full history, including date of purchase, and where appropriate, when it was put into use, deployed, or installed. Option C, any specific legal requirements have been met. Schedule details of maintenance and repairs. The end of life date, if specified. Option D, all of the above. Option D is the correct answer. All of the above. Good documentation is important to protect your patients. It promotes patient safety and quality care. Complete and accurate medical records keeping can help ensure that your patients get the right care at the right time. Question 4. What should be your best response as a nurse when your patient's heart rate is 58, who is on digoxin, and due for the dose? Option A. Give dose as prescribed. Option B. Give dose and tell the doctor. Option C. Give the dose after one hour. Option D. Omit dose, record why and inform the doctor. Correct answer is option D. Omit dose, record why, and inform the doctor. In particular, a nurse should always check the pulse before administering digoxin. If the pulse is less than 60 beats per minute, wait for 5 minutes, and check the pulse again. If it is still less than 60, omit dose, record why, and inform the doctor. Question 5. You are caring for a lumbar postoperative patient, and how do you care for the patient while moving and handling? Option A, move the patient close to side rails so he she could assist herself. Option B, move with leg raised or flexed. Option C, move the patient as a unit. Option D, move the patient's leg first and then the body. Option C is the correct answer. Move the patient as a unit. In general some techniques can be used to reduce the post-surgical pain and injury. 
so always try to move the postoperative lumbar patient as a unit. Question 6. You have to administer 9 mg of anticoagulant prescribed by the physician for thrombosis for your patient, and the drug available in stock is in 3 mg. How many tablets do you need to administer? Option A, 1.5 tablets. Option B, 3 tablets. Option C, 4 tablets. Option D, 6 tablets. Answer is option B, 3 tablets. According to the drug dosage calculation, desired dose divided by available dose equals 9 divided by 3. That is 3 tablets. We gently remind you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test, and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 7. You are assessing a patient with peritonitis, and what would be your expected finding on the abdomen? Option A, hyperactive high-pitched bowel sounds and a firm abdomen. Option B, a soft abdomen with bowel sounds every two to three seconds. Option C, ascites and increased vascular pattern on the skin. Option D, rebound tenderness and guarding. Correct answer is option D, rebound tenderness and guarding. As a nurse you should know the signs and symptoms of peritonitis include abdominal pain or tenderness bloating or feeling of fullness in your abdomen. Question 8. You have a prescription from the doctor to administer 200 micrograms of injection to your patient. The stock available is a bottle of 1 mg per milliliter. How many ml do you need to administer? Option A, 0.2 ml. Option B, 20 ml. Option C, 2 ml. Option D, 10 ml. Correct answer is option A, 0.2 ml. Bearing mind, the two dose values must be in the same unit 1 mg equals 1000 micrograms, 200 micrograms equals 0.2 milligrams. Question 9. You are interpreting the ECG result of your patient, and there is clear evidence of atrial disruption. What does it indicate? Option A, atrial fibrillation. Option B, complete blockage of the heart. Option C, cardiac arrest. Option D, ventricular attach. Option A is the right answer. Atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, you will see many fibrillation beats instead of one P wave and abnormal heart rate will be recorded. A characteristic sign of atrial fibrillation is the absence of P waves in the ECG. Question 10. Choose the accurate position to administer a medication from the given below. Option A, sitting position with head tilt backwards. Option B, prone position with head tilt to the left. Option C, sitting position with head tilt to the right. Option D, prone position with head tilt to the right. Option A is the correct answer. Sitting position with head tilt backwards. The best position used for applying eye medication is sitting position with head tilt backwards. Question 11. Which among the given below is not a sign and symptom in hypoglycemia? Option A, feeling hungry and sweating. Option B, anxiety or irritability. Option C, blurred vision. Option D, ketoacidosis. Answer is option D, ketoacidosis. We should expect feeling hungry, sweating, anxiety, or irritability, and blurred vision are signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. Ketoacidosis is another serious condition associated with diabetes. Question 12. You need to administer oxygen to your patient, and what is your requirement before administering the oxygen you need to check for? Option A. No prescription is required unless he will use it at home. Option B, prescription not required for oxygen therapy. Option C, a prescription is required including route, method, and how long. Option D, keep nil per oral before oxygen administration. Option C is the right answer. A prescription is required including route, method, and how long. 
In general a practitioner's order is required to initiate oxygen therapy, except in an emergency situation. Question 13. Choose from the given below, the one sign, which is not of meconium aspiration. Option A, apnea. Option B, crying. Option C, floppy in appearance. Option D, bluish skin color. Answer is option B, crying. As a nurse we should know the most common signs of meconium aspiration, which are rapid labored breathing, retractions, grunting sound with breathing and cyanosis. Question 14. What is the normal heart rate of a child who is 1 to 2 year old? Option A, 80 to 110 beats per minutes. Option B, 80 to 140 beats per minutes. Option C, 75 to 115 beats per minutes. Option D, 100 to 160 beats per minutes. Option A is the right answer. 80 to 110 beats per minutes. Normal heart rate of a 1 to 2 year old child is 80 to 130 per minutes. We recommend you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 15. And aneurysms can develop on which parts of the body? Choose the correct two answers. Option A, interparenchymal aneurysms. Option B, capillary aneurysms. Option C, abdominal aorta. Option D, circle of Willis. Right answers are option C and D. Abdominal aorta and circle of Willis. In particular, an aneurysm can occur in the brain, aorta and legs. Question 16. Which among the given below are notifiable diseases that should be reported on a national level? Option A, tuberculosis. Option B, whooping cough. Option C, influenza. Option D, chickenpox. Right answers are option A and B. As you should know, tuberculosis and whooping cough are the notifiable diseases. Question 17. What are the common causes of hyperglycemia? Option A, eating too much carbohydrate. Option B, overtreating a hypoglycemia. Option C, infection, for example, colds, bronchitis, flu, vomiting, diarrhea, urinary infections, and skin infections and stress. Option D, not eating enough protein. Right answers are option A, B and C. Eating too much carbohydrate, overtreating a hypoglycemia, and infection. As we know eating too much carbohydrate, overtreating hypoglycemia, and infection can cause hyperglycemia. Protein does not increase the blood sugar. Protein requires insulin for metabolism, but has minimal effect on blood sugar levels. Question 18. What are the signs and symptoms of compartment syndrome of a patient with post-op repair of tibia and fibula? Option A, numbness, tingling and pain. Option B, cool dusky toes. Option C, toes swelling. Option D, all of the above. Correct answer is option D. All of the above. Numbness, tingling and pain, cool dusky toes and toes swelling. As we know the compartment syndrome can develop in fractures of the lower leg. Signs of compartment syndrome include crescendo symptoms, pain with passive movement of involved muscles, paresthesias, pallor and very late finding is pulselessness. Question 19. What position should be given to a patient whom you are preparing for abdominal paracentesis? Option A, prone. Option B, side-lying. Option C, supine. Option D, supine position with head of the bed elevated to 45 to 60 degrees. Option D is the right answer. Supine position with head of the bed elevated to 45 to 60 degrees. Well, the patient for abdominal paracentesis always used supine position with the head elevated 45 to 60 degrees. Question 20. What is the AVUP observation system used for? Option A, an assessment for confusion. 
Option B, assessment for the level of consciousness. Option C, a replacement for GCS. Option D, assessment of vital signs. Option B is the correct answer. Assessment for the level of consciousness. Always remember, AVPU scale is a system by which healthcare professionals can measure and record a patient's level of consciousness. Question 21. You are transfusing blood products to your patient, and the patient has suddenly developed elevated temperature and pain in the loin during blood transfusion. What does it indicate to you? Option A, fail to follow the aseptic techniques during transfusion. Option B, severe blood transfusion reaction. Option C, common blood transfusion reaction. Option D, due to severe anemia. Option B is the right answer. Severe blood transfusion reaction. As we know depending on the type of transfusion reaction complications occur and symptoms include fever, vomiting, abdominal pain, skin rashes and diarrhea. We recommend you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 22. You need to administer 25 mg of injection prescribed by the doctor to your patient. The solution dispensed is of 50 mg per milliliter. How many ml you need to administer for the patient to receive the correct dose? Option A, 0.5 ml. Option B, 1 ml. Option C, 2 ml. Option D, 1.5 ml. Right answer is option A, 0.5 ml. According to the calculation dose prescribed, dose divided by milliliter, so 25 divided by 50 is equal to 0.5 ml. Question 23. You are caring for a suicidal patient admitted to the psychiatric facility for three days. Suddenly she is showing signs of cheerfulness and motivation. What you should consider this change as? Option A, she wants to go home. Option B, that treatment and medication is working. Option C, that she has finalized suicide plan. Option D, she has made new friends. Right answer is option C, that she has finalized suicide plan. As we know because of the unhealthy interpersonal and social interactions can be associated with an increased risk for suicide. So the nurses should focus on any changes in the patient's social situations and evaluate how and why the change occurred. Question 24. As a registered nurse in your understanding who is responsible for safeguarding? Option A, healthcare assistants. Option B, registered nurses. Option C, doctors. Option D, all of the above. Correct answer is option D all of the above. In particular, everyone who is working in the healthcare facility has the responsibility in safeguarding. That is doctors, nurses and healthcare assistants. Question 25. Which category people are at high risk for developing coronary artery disease? Option A, female with high cholesterol. Option B, lack of exercise, male. Option C, male, obese, sedentary lifestyle. Option D, female, obese, non-sedentary lifestyle. Answer is option C. Male, obese, sedentary lifestyle. Men are generally at greater risk of coronary artery disease together with obesity and high blood cholesterol levels. If you find our sample CBT questions and answer reference useful please like our video. More CBT questions will be uploaded in the coming days. To get the notification, consider subscribing our channel. Visit our YouTube channel for more clear-cut medical subjects. Thanks for watching.